Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to be doing a subscriber request video. I posted a model of a Viking helmet yesterday on my Facebook page, and I received a question of whether I could do a tutorial on how I did that, right? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to model it in Maya, modeling and UVing. We're going to uh, sculpt a little bit in ZBrush, and then we're going to texture it in Substance Painter. So it's going to be a complete workflow from start to finish, right? Here we go. Alright guys, we're in Maya 2018 and let's get started with our helmet. Now, typically you would expect the top of a helmet to be half of a sphere, but we're not going to do that and I'll show you why. If we go into a sphere here, you see that uh, all the quads are kind of pinched towards uh, eventually triangles and we want to have a band crossing the top, uh, like a cross uh, on top of the helmet. So instead of using the sphere, what we're going to do is we're going to use a cube, okay? So we're going to start with the default cube. We're going to hit Control A to open up the attribute editor. And then let's go in and let's see. We'll start with a subdivision level of three by three by three. That should be okay. And then we're going to go into the bottom. We're going to right click get a face. And we're going to select those bottom faces and get rid of them. All right. And then we're going to go in right click object mode and we're going to hit three to preview smooth. And let's see what we got. Okay, now, now that we have this, let's turn this into something that uh, remotely resembles a sphere-like shape. So we're going to jump into this view right here. And I'm going to leave this in preview smooth mode. I'm going to right click on a vertex. And I'm basically going to drag select these top vertices, hit R, bring that in, scale out, take those, take those. And we're basically going to just take it from here and start to create that shape, okay? I think that looks okay. Let's have a look. Yeah, not too bad. And as you can see, we now have an opportunity to create a cross over the top, right? So we basically have these faces and we have these faces that's the idea right okay but we're not quite there yet so it's still a bit square so we're gonna jump to our top view and we're gonna go in we're gonna right click go to vertex and let's see I'm gonna jump in and take these shift select and take these which will automatically deselect the ones in the middle, which is exactly what we want. And we're going to kind of round this out to something like this, right? And then you can tweak these guys if you want. We'll, uh, we'll do that. So we're going to drag select them here and here. And you can kind of bring that in and make that a bit rounder, okay? So I'm uh, happy with that shape to begin with. You see that the bottom here is kind of flowing, so we can uh, tweak that if you like. And the way we'll do that is we'll hit four for wireframe mode, and we're basically just gonna take these guys, hit W and kind of bring that down until that is level, all right. So that's our base, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Injured Edge Loop, Option Box, uh, Single Setting, and we'll add one right here. And keep in mind, we're still in Preview Smooth, so I'm gonna hit one to go back. So we'll do one right there, that looks okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and go to Face, and hit Q on our keyboard. We're gonna select that bottom row right there, we're going to select that cross right there and that cross right there, okay? So we're going to hit uh, Control e to extrude. Let's do 0 0.2. That's a bit much. Let's try 0 0.1, maybe even less. 0 0.05. And we'll do a quick preview smooth. Hit 3, which will give us something like this. Not bad. Hit 1 to go back. Now, what I want is to kind of hold on to this shape down here. So I'm gonna to go to uh, Injured Edge Loop, Option Box. Still a single setting, perfect. We'll uh, push one down here, like so. 
And let's see, we'll push one up here. That should be okay. A Q on the keyboard, object mode three to preview smooth and still looking good. All right, hit one to go back. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna place our horns, if you will. And I only wanna do this uh, on one side and then copy it over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into into the edge loop again. This time we're gonna set it to multiple and set it to one. So it will be automatically centered. So we've got one perfectly in the middle right here. And uh, let's see, we only need that on one side actually, that's fine. So we're gonna hit enter, hit Q on our keyboard. We're gonna go in and we're gonna right click at a face and we're gonna drag select and get rid of half of our helmet, okay? Let's flip that around, there you go. So what I want is for my horn to come out here in this uh, space. Now Maya 2018 has a circular eyes so you can make perfect circles. I'm not gonna do that though for two reasons. Not everybody has Maya 2018 and also if you do circular eyes at an angle then it will kind of mess up my normals, right? So instead, I'm gonna open up the modeling toolkit. We're gonna to go to multi-cut, and I'm just gonna go in and go from here to, well, let's make sure that we're clean here, there, hit enter, and then we're gonna go from there to there, hit enter again, and hit Q on our keyboard. Let's uh, close that out. We're gonna go in, we're gonna right click at our vertex. I'm gonna drag select that vertex and go up to uh, let's see, edit mesh and chamfer vertices, which will give me this. I'm gonna drag select these guys, hit R to scale that up. And then we need to tweak this a bit more. So I'm gonna open up that modeling toolkit again, go to multi-cut and let's see, I'm gonna do one in the middle right here. And I'm gonna hold down shift and pull one down. We may need to adjust that in a second, but that's fine. And then we'll do one here and one here and hit enter. And like I said, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the best view to tweak that. Okay, cue my keyboard. I'm just gonna tweak that a little bit, okay? So we got that. <clears throat> this is supposed to look more like a circle, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag select these. And we're gonna hit R and we're gonna start to flare them out. And you can see that the one at the bottom here needs some pulling. And we'll push that one up a little bit. Take these two basically just tweak them until you're happy with that shape. I think that's not too bad. And again, you know, it's not smooth yet, all right? So I'm happy with this. Uh, let's check if we got any end guns. I don't think so. We got four here, four here, one, two, three, four there. Everything seems to be all right. So we're gonna get a face. And I'm gonna take these four faces right here and I'm gonna hit uh, Control E to extrude. Hit W to pull out. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this out like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into this view right here. Okay, I'm gonna hit R and I'm gonna scale this in just a bit. Hit G to repeat last command. W to pull out again. And we're gonna hit E to rotate it. And again, R to scale that in. And obviously this is becoming our horn, if you will. G to repeat, W to pull up again, R to scale in again, and E to rotate a little, G to repeat, W to pull up, E to rotate, and R to scale in, and then G to repeat, W to pull up, E to rotate, R to scale in once again. And you can even maybe just hit W and kind of bring that in a little bit. So once you're at this stage, what you can do is uh, drag those vertices, you know, kind of in position the way you want them. But this is all gonna turn out okay once it's smooth, right? 
So let's just uh, tweak this a little bit. I think I'm, I'm happy with it. Let's do a quick preview. Right click, hit three. Yeah, not too bad. All right, hit one to go back. Now what I want is for a little edge in here so we can add uh, like leather detail or something. So I'm gonna go into, into the edge loop again. We're gonna go to single setting. And let's do one right there. Q on a keyboard, right click face, select those. Control E to extrude and let's do 0 0.1. Um, maybe a bit less, 0 0.05. That's better, all right? So I think that looks okay. Let's do one more preview smooth. Yeah, that looks all right, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're just gonna tighten this up a little bit before we smooth. So we're gonna go to Injured Edge Loop again. Let's put in one right there. And one right there. You on a keyboard, right click object mode, three to preview smooth. Yeah, much better. All right, so I want to go back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump to this view right here. I'm gonna hit W so I can see where my pivot point is and it's in a perfect position. We're gonna hit Control D to duplicate it, hit E to rotate it, hold down J to flip it over like so. Drag select both, go to uh, mesh and combine. And then we're gonna right click and go to vertex, drag select, go to uh, edit mesh and merge, okay? So this will basically be our low poly. It's maybe a bit too low poly. So what we'll do is we'll go in, go to mesh and smooth and see how far we can get, okay? Now I wanna end up with a poly count of somewhere around let's say no higher than 1500, okay? So I'm gonna go to uh, display. We're gonna go to heads up display. I'm gonna turn on poly count. And we're at 1152 right now, okay? So let's see if we set it to two, then we go way over, right? So we're gonna set it to one. And that's gonna be our low poly, okay? So what we need to do next is we need to UV this guy, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to uh, UV. We're gonna go to UV editor and have a look and see what we got. This is of course rubbish, uh, so that's fine. We're gonna go up to UV and let's do an automatic projection. So we get all this stuff and got all these projected cuts where they want to be and whatnot, and it's basically all nonsense, right? So what I like to do is go in, select where I want edges, uh, cut it there, and then flatten it out, right? So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go to UV shell. I'm gonna drag select everything. I'm gonna right click and go to cut and sew and select move and sew. So everything is one big blob, if you will, right? So I don't get distracted by all those white lines, all right? So then we're gonna right click, we're gonna get an edge, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna double click on this edge and we're probably gonna have to select parts of it, but that's fine. That's the flow that I want. And then I want it to, let's see where I want the other cut. Let's do that in the back, right? So I want that to cut here. Right there, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to cut and sew and select cut. So now if I right click go to UV shell and select all of this, right? And then I go to, uh, let's see, modify and, where do you go? Modify, unfold and I'll go in, there you go, there's my part. That's that, and we'll sort that out later, but for now it's okay. Then we're gonna go in, we're gonna take our horns, and I'm gonna right click, go to edge, 
And let's see, I'm gonna cut it off right there. And then I'm gonna cut it. Uh, let's see. Cut it way up here. Just wanna make sure that I'm still on the right one. So again, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to uh, cut and sew and cut. And do the same with the other end. Let's see, yeah, that's where I wanna cut. So right there. And then we'll try to go up the horn, basically in, a, in the same uh, position. I think that looks fine with the exception of, of this. Yep. We're going to right click. We're going to go to uh, cut again. And we'll do one more in between, if you will. I'm just going to select this stuff, go to modify and unfold. And then I'm going to select all of it. And we're going to right click and go to layout. So modify and where's my layout? Right there. And if we go in, you'll see that you have pieces of the horn, you got the main helmet. So the helmet, we need to cut that as well. So let's do this. I'm gonna right click at the edge and I'm gonna go over the top of the helmet right there. And I'm gonna do, yeah, that's fine. Let's do that first. And let's cut that. And there you go. Now you have separate shells. And let's see if I need to do more. Now it's all gonna be one material, the top here. Uh, so I think we're good. Um, yeah, I think we're good. So what I'll do is, uh, because this is gonna be a very low poly prop, right? I'm gonna right click, go to UV, select all of it. And let's go to modify and unfold just to be sure and then we're gonna go to modify and we're gonna go to layout again right now what you can do if you like is go in and reposition these pieces manually if you like just by hitting E to rotate and so forth um, not sure if you have to but you can just so you know right now what I would do though is I would kind of you know try to make them smaller but it's kind of up to you. So what I'll do here is I'll just go in and have um, the system figured out for me. There you go, right? So let's call this guy UV. Normally I would probably do this in ZBrush, but we're gonna do this in Maya today. So we have all this. Uh, I'm gonna drag select my entire object. I'm gonna go to edit, delete by type history. We're gonna go to modify and freeze transformation. And we're gonna go to modify and center pivot, right? Then we're going to go to File, we're going to go to Export Selection, and let's go to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. We'll call this Helmet New. Go in, Helmet OBJ. All right, cool. So let's uh, export that. And let's uh, jump into ZBrush. Hey guys, well, we're in ZBrush, as you can see, and it's time to load up our uh, low poly helmet. Now I have a slightly different layout. I customized it, but uh, nevertheless, that should be fine. You should be able to find everything okay, all right? So I'm gonna go up to import. I'm gonna select my low poly helmet, and I'm gonna left click and drag and pull that out and hold shift to snap it, okay? Then I'm gonna click on edit, and I'm gonna click on make poly mesh 3D so I can actually work on it. And what I wanna do is I want this to become my high poly model so I can bake my detail. I already saved the low poly model out of Maya. So what I'm gonna do with this guy is hit Control D to bump up the subdivision level. And if you look up here at active points, it's now at 4,600. And we're gonna keep on going until we're at probably four, yeah, there you go, 4.7 million, right? Now let's uh, ding this thing up a bit. So we're gonna go into our brush and I'm gonna look for my trim dynamic brush right here. 
and the brush size is okay and I'm going to start by going in and basically working on that bottom part of the helmet okay so try to just make it look like it has been ding dropped hit uh, you know you don't want this to be too straight you also don't want this to be deemed too hard because if you really change the surface by going nuts and creating holes and whatnot, it's not going to bake out properly, you know. So try to keep it somewhat subtle. Keep in mind that I'm trying to be really fast about this because of, you know, for sake of the tutorial. So uh, I advise you to take your time. If you do this and you take, let's say, an hour or so, your model will look much, much better, okay? So don't beat me up because, you know, it's not perfect, right? All right, so we went through that, and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go in, let's see, and I'm just gonna get the main surface here as well in some places. Just get those smooth edges out. All right and again you don't want it to look straight factory made or whatever okay some dings and so forth starting to get there right now what we're going to do next is i'm going to go in and i'm going to use an alpha and i'm going to use these scratches here i'm going to right click and increase the size of my brush let's hold shift to get this into position come on I don't know why he's bugging me like that. There you go. Yep. And we're just going to go over this and create some damage. All right. And try to be random. Don't go and repeat patterns all the time. And if you've got pressure sensitivity, that even helps more because you can, you know, put some. Uh, some pressure on to make it more and less and so forth okay all right so not bad now uh, what we do have is our horns and we don't want them to be impacted because they're supposed to be I don't know ivory or something like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mask out our um, horns we're gonna hold down the control key and we're just gonna go over that until we basically cover these guys all right and then we're gonna go up to surface, we're gonna get a noise, and we're gonna go in there and let's see, we're gonna increase the strength a little bit, just to add a little bit of noise, okay? So when we hit okay there, you'll see that, uh, hopefully you can see it, it roughed it up a little bit, all right? Okay, now uh, just get rid of the mask by holding control and left click and drag outside of your object. And we're ready to go okay so uh, we need to export this guy as our high poly so I'm gonna go to my sub tool menu I'm gonna select this guy right here make sure it's selected and I'm gonna go up to uh, where do you go um, export I'm gonna export that as helmet high poly OBJ all right and save that now before we jump into substance painter i want to make sure that i'm able to apply a number of different materials to my helmet so i want to create a color id mask in maya so let's uh, jump back to maya for a sec okay here we go hey guys here we are i'm just gonna jump in and i'm gonna set a material for uh let's see we already got a default Lambert on the entire helmet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, right click, go to face, sorry about that. And we're gonna start somewhere in the middle here, double click on that. And I'm gonna hit shift period to increase that selection until I'm at the base of the helmet, right? And everything there is covered. So I'm gonna right click assign new material Let's do a new Lambert, and it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to close the toolkit. It really doesn't matter what color it is as long as it's a color, okay? We're going to go in here, and we're going to do the same. So I'm going to click and shift, double click. 
and then I'm going to hit shift period to increase that selection. There you go. I'm going to right click assign existing material because I want that same red on it, Lambert 2. Now I want those letter sections to be different. So I'm going to go in and click and shift double click, click and shift double click. I'll hit four for wireframe mode so you can see it better. Hit shift period and go in and I think that is already enough hit F to zoom in and 4 for wireframe mode looks like we need one more so that's all selected and then we'll do that one as well and we're gonna right click and assign a new material and we'll do a new Lambert and we'll do uh, whatever color, let's do yellow, that's fine. We're gonna go over to the other end, we're gonna repeat that process, so hit four, and I'm gonna go in and select those, and select those, hit shift period, hit shift period one more time. I think we're good, yeah, we are. We're gonna right click assign existing material, we'll do Lambert three, which is yellow, so we can apply ivory for the horns, we can apply leather for the yellow bit here, and we'll do steel or iron for the helmet, okay? So we need to make sure that this is saved out. So we're gonna go to File, and we're gonna go to Export Selection. I'm gonna save this as uh, Helmet New FBX, and make sure I actually save it as an FBX. There we go. Uh, it's going to be in the same folder right here, export. And now we can go into Substance Painter. Here we go. All right, guys, well, we're in Substance Painter. We're going to go in, File and New. And I'm going to leave this at PBR Metal Rough. I'm going to select my low poly mesh. So I'm going to go to my desktop. Uh, let's see, Helmet New right here. And we're going to take our FBX. And we're going to hit OK. And here we have one, two, and three groups because of this uh, color masking that we did in Maya, okay? You can see this is our low poly. It uh, looks pretty rough. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and bake our textures. So we're gonna go to bake textures. We're gonna go and set the map size to 4K, why not? Let's see, we're gonna click and set up our high poly here, which is this guy. And we're going to leave all of this alone. This is all good. Uh, the maps that I want to bake, I'm going to turn off my ID um, because we don't have any effect or color. Uh, everything else I'm going to leave alone. Um, during the bake, we are going to get some log errors, but that's fine. We're just going to bake all texture sets. And once that's done, we'll reset our interface and we can go in and start to texture. Right guys, and we're done. Well, if we look around, you can see that it brought in all the texture from uh, ZBrush, which is perfect. Our horns are still nice and clean, which is good. And we have the option to select them individually for texturing, which is perfect, okay? Now, once again, keep in mind that a prop like this, um, if you go through the entire process and you do it properly, uh, you will spend a number of hours doing this, okay? So uh, I went through the process really fast. Uh, but take your time, okay? All right, so now that we have this, let's go in and let's see what we're gonna start with. Uh, let's start with these horns. Let's do the horns, okay? So we're gonna select them. And uh, let's see what we can uh, do. I think we got something called marble. Um, I think so, yeah. And we got marble fine and marble polished. So let's take marble fine. Let's drag that in and we'll get that perfect texture, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. And you can go in and because this is a smart material, you can uh, tweak the base color. You can do all sorts of things with it. Okay, but we're just gonna leave this alone. I think it looks fine, right? So then let's see our uh, leather. So we're gonna take this 
we're gonna go in we're gonna look for leather uh, this is a little rough that sounds about right let's bring that in and there you go and again same deal you can go in here you can uh, go to the leather base you can go in and change the color if you like you know it kind of depends on what you want right all right so now that we have that we're gonna go to uh, the main helmet now for that let's do let's make sure we've got it selected uh, yeah, that's the one, the top one. Uh, let's do steel. And uh, let's see what we got. I think we got something called steel medieval, which is this guy. So we're going to bring that in. Awesome. We're going to turn on the other elements. And there you go. And then we want to kind of create uh, the effect of this cross on top and uh, the edge down here. So we can see that a bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. We're gonna go in and we're gonna, we got a brush here. We're gonna go in and change the color to black. Like so. Let's see, we don't want the uh, flow to be too thick. So we're gonna bring that back. We're gonna increase the size a bit. And let's see what we got. So we're just gonna go over that bottom edge right there. Just to darken that up. And you can choose any color you want, of course. And then we're gonna go in here as well. And the cool thing is because of the layer that's selected, you don't have to worry about hitting the horns or whatnot because you can't, because that layer is not selected, okay? Right, let's uh, zoom out a bit. Let's see if we can already see a little bit of this effect going on. Yeah, we do. Now, you could even go in and uh, let's see, we'll, we'll tweak that a little bit. We'll go in and tweak that color and make that red. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty strong, as you can see. So we're gonna select that red and we're gonna go and take that flow and take that size and opacity. We're gonna bring that way down. That's even too much. Very, very faint traces of red. After all, this is a battle helmet. Okay, so got some blood going on and so forth. I think that looks okay. Yeah, and basically that is it guys. You can go on and on and on, but I wanted to show you the process, all right? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go up to uh, mode. We're gonna go to render mode. Here's our helmet. Okay, let's get into place. Let's set this uh, up quickly. So we're gonna go into uh, our dome, change that to a clear color for a background. And then let's see, I'm gonna increase my samples a little bit. Uh, let's see what else. We can uh, go in and choose a different background if you like. That kinda looks cool. Let's see what else we got. And look for whatever one suits your needs. I think this one looks okay. Uh, what you can do is you can rotate the environment if you want the light from a different angle. So I like to kind of highlight those crash, uh, those scratches and so forth. So I'm gonna do that. And then you can even go in and do some post effects. You can do some, uh, some bloom, some vignetting and so forth. So for example, vignetting, if you bump that up, uh, you're supposed to get kind of dark corners here we'll see if that happens okay so uh yeah that's it guys so hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial um please let me know if you did hit that like button if you did don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future videos okay well that's it for today see you guys next time bye well thanks for watching and before you go please hit that mh button to subscribe okay see you guys next time bye